This episode is made possible by Dashlane. Protect your valuable data from prying eyes with a free account from Dashlane. When was the last time you replaced your phone? What about your laptop? Your razor? A light bulb? Probably pretty recently. With a product like a light bulb, you replace it out of necessity. The bulb stops working, you get a new one. Razors are similar. Once the blade isn't sharp anymore, you throw it out and replace it. Laptops and smartphones are a different story. Odds are, the last time you bought a new phone, your old one still worked just fine. A recent study showed that, on average, Americans tend to replace their smartphones every 22.7 months, under two years. What's going on here? Why do we keep consuming products at such a rapid rate? Short answer, many products are designed to break, wear out, or become useless in some other fashion. The longer answer is a bit more nuanced. There are two factors at work, planned obsolescence and perceived obsolescence. In a nutshell, planned obsolescence is a strategy that some manufacturers employ to make sure their product fails after a certain amount of time or usage. These days, you'll often hear people say things like, they don't make them like they used to, and in some regards, that's accurate. But the history of planned obsolescence goes back further than you think. In 1925, when commercially available light bulbs were still relatively new, an international group of companies came together in Geneva to found the Phoebus Cartel. These companies included some we still see today, like General Electric and Philips, among others. Their idea was simple, restrict the useful life of all commercially available light bulbs to 1,000 hours, thus generating repeat sales and maximizing profit. The Phoebus cartel slashed bulb life from around 2,500 to 1,000 hours, and since these companies more or less controlled the entire market, they could raise prices without fear of competition. The group demanded each member company send bulbs for inspection at their laboratory, and any company whose bulb exceeded the 1,000 hour limit was fined based on how far off they were. This shady practice continued without the public's knowledge until 1939, when World War II complicated international business. This is just one example of corporations conspiring to maximize profits on products that could be much more durable or long-lasting. Another common example is razors. Why sell just one product that a customer can maintain for years with a little care, when you can sell them the convenience of replaceable parts? This is where the two-part pricing strategy really came into the mainstream. You could buy a handle for your razor, and instead of having to keep honing a fixed blade, you could just throw away the old blade and attach a new one. The customer gets a more convenient shave, and the corporation can keep making money from that customer for as long as they need sharp blades. Multiply that by tens or hundreds of thousands of customers, and you have an extremely lucrative business model. Two-part pricing is incredibly common today. Look at video game consoles. You buy the console once, but the company profits every time you buy a game. You buy one coffee maker, then hundreds of pods over its lifetime. One printer, hundreds or even thousands of dollars in ink cartridges. That last one can be particularly egregious, as many printers have been shown to stop printing properly well before their cartridges are actually out of ink. Higher end examples of planned obsolescence include TVs with sensitive parts installed near heat sources, sneakily reducing their effective life, and smartphones with non-replaceable batteries, which stop holding a charge after a couple of years. Planned obsolescence is only one part of the picture, though. What happens when a product is inherently too reliable to break every year or two? Cars, high-end smartphones and laptops, sound systems, TVs, the big-ticket items that should last you a while because of how expensive they are. How do companies generate repeat sales of luxury items? Easy, they prey on our rabid consumerism. You don't have the new iPhone or Samsung? What are you, a caveman? If you look at the specs, not much has changed, but for some reason everyone has to have the latest, shiniest $1,000 phone. So you buy it to fit in. This is what big corporations do. They make you feel cheap or old-fashioned for not buying the latest and greatest thing, when just a year ago your phone was the latest and greatest, and will continue to be a great phone for at least a few more years. This is perceived obsolescence, and it's really our own fault. We allow ourselves to be manipulated into thinking we're less valuable members of society if we're not actively engaged in mindless consumerism. You have a car from 2014? How is that thing still running? Your TV isn't 4K HDR? How can you stand looking at that? It's an endless cycle. Maybe we deserve this consumerist hell we've enabled. But then again, maybe the corporations should make the greener choice and start producing products with more longevity. After all, every tablet, ink cartridge, or razor blade we throw away contributes to the trash heaps and toxic waste dumps steadily growing around the world. All this said, while planned obsolescence can be seen as a kind of exploitative practice, it's not completely negative. Inexpensive and replaceable products have given people of all income levels access to more goods than would have been possible in the past. We live lives that are much more convenient and comfortable thanks to affordable products, even if they aren't built to last a lifetime. It also provides jobs in manufacturing, giving workers the means to make a living and contribute to society. 
Think of all the small companies making phone accessories. Millions of phone cases, screen protectors, and countless other knickknacks keep these companies afloat and profitable. Even things like smartphones can be excused, for the most part at least, because whether we like it or not, the technology is improving on at least a yearly basis, which leads to more powerful and capable devices. Sure, Apple and Samsung make a killing on their flagship phones, but most of the technology is available in less expensive devices, which benefits the consumers who aren't willing to shell out $1,000 on the top-of-the-line model. Even if the battery stops holding a charge in three years, the savvy consumer will just buy a newer model once the price has dropped, making the hassle of replacing a battery irrelevant. Positives and negatives aside, this overly consumerist culture might be on its way out. Some smartphone manufacturers are working on modular or easily repairable devices. Ride-sharing services are incredibly popular, and some modern cars, like those from Tesla, are fairly future-proof thanks to over-the-air software updates. Even car ownership may become a thing of the past, as fleets of self-driving vehicles become available for instant rental. We may start to see a dramatic shift in perspectives on ownership in the coming years. Whatever your purchasing habits, just be aware that, yes, planned obsolescence is a thing, but not in all cases, and it's not always necessarily a bad thing. And no matter how often you replace your smartphone and laptop, you can rest easy knowing that your valuable personal data is always secure with Dashlane. The new and improved Dashlane is more than just a multi-device password manager, even though it does do that really well. It also offers a super secure VPN to keep your browsing absolutely safe. No ads, no data collection, and easy access to the peace of mind that can only come from 100% secure browsing. Dashlane also offers dark web monitoring, a service that scans the web for any leaked personal data and sends you alerts, so you can take immediate action to protect your accounts. The kind of data usually targeted includes things like usernames and passwords, credit card numbers, social security numbers, phone numbers, and postal and IP addresses. Thanks to dark web monitoring, you never have to worry about that again. Dashlane's dark web service scans more than 12 billion records attached to hacks and data breaches, with almost a million new records added every day. Try out these awesome new features by signing up for the 30-day free trial of Dashlane Premium. And if you really want to get serious about online security, use the coupon code SECONDTHOUGHT to get 10% off your subscription.